in the vast deserts of southeastern Iran lies a place of great historical significance. Shar i Sahta, or Burn City, is an ancient archaeological site that has fascinated researchers and archaeologists for decades. Today, we explore this remarkable city and its intriguing history, focusing on the differences between its first and second periods. The first period of Shahar i Sahta dates back to approximately 3200 to 2800 BCE before Common Era. At this time, it was a thriving urban center characterized by its sophisticated architecture and advanced urban planning. The first period inhabitants of the city genetically resembled the Neolithic Bactrians and Neolithic Iranian farmers. However, the second period of Shahar i Sahta, which spanned from approximately 2800 to 2500 before Common Era, was marked by significant changes. Genetics of inhabitants living in the second period show a significant admixture from a South Asian source, which some call ancestral South Indian admixture. Geneticists often use inhabitants of Shahar i Sahta from the second period as an example of Harappan or Indus Valley culture genetics. Uh, artifacts from the second period show a shift in trade patterns. The city's connections with distant regions weakened and the focus turned to local production. Pottery and metalwork remained essential, but there was a notable reduction in the complexity of designs. In this video, I will show you the autosomal genetic results, predicted phenotypes, and GED match results of five highest quality genetic samples from Shahr i Sahta in the first period. And just to show you the major changes that occurred later for comparison, I will show you the GED match results of a Shahr i Sahta sample from the second period. When talking about their genetics, I will use made-up names to refer to these samples. There are other samples I won't feature in this video, and it is because they are lower quality. You will still find the download links for these samples in the links which will be in the description. The names of our five subjects are Ali, Ahmad, Yasmin, Muhammad, and Hassan. Uh, Ali's, Ahmad's, and Muhammad's paternal haplogroup is J2A. Hassan's paternal haplogroup is L. Hassan's mitochondrial DNA is M33. Ali's mitochondrial DNA is J1. Muhammad's mitochondrial DNA is U1. Yasmin's mitochondrial DNA is T1. And Muhammad's mitochondrial DNA is R5. Now we're moving on to the genetics and phenotypes of these five individuals. Keep in mind that these five individuals, all five of them are from this city and all five of them are from the first period of the city. Uh, which means they are, they resemble, in terms of their genetics, they resemble BMAC and they resemble Iranian Neolithic farmers. Now let's start with Ali. Uh, this is Ali's predicted phenotype. He's predicted to have brown color eyes, Greek shaped nose and black hair. Uh, all five are predicted to have black hair, but he's predicted to have wavy hair. He had blue eye haplotype 1 and he was heterozygous for blue eye haplotype 4. Now BH4 is a very interesting variation because it peaks in the Mediterranean. It's a blue eye variation that peaks in Mediterranean. Very interesting stuff. North, Northern Europeans tend to not have it. For example, I don't have BH4 and I actually can't have BH4 because I have BH2. You cannot have these two together. If you have BH4, that means you don't have BH2. Uh, and um, what, what's interesting about this individual is if you look at the area that I shaded in purple, that all has to do with DRD2 gene. So he has very typical genotype in DRD2 for anybody that's not a European and there's nothing really atypical about it except for this one one variation at the end where he has AC. You can see the atypical allele there is A and this leads to less dopamine D2 receptors, higher odds of being an alcoholic. But overall, I don't think it matters all that much because his genotype in DRD2 overall is just so typical, absolutely typical genotype. Now, um, in Comte's Valmet variation, he is heterozygous, which means he has intermediate level of dopamine in the brain. And in MAOA, he has got TT, which actually leads to a increase of dopamine in the brain because the MAOA enzyme that breaks down dopamine is inhibited uh, with this genotype. He does not have the European lactose persistence mutation, and he also doesn't have the Arab lactose persistence mutation. Yes, there is actually an Arab lactose persistence mutation. There's also an African lactose persistence mutation. There's also an East Asian lactose persistence I just got this from like Googling. Uh, and no, he does not have the Arab lactose persistence mutation. Uh, he also does not have East Asian EDAR, which is no surprise because he's not an East Asian. And if you're not an East Asian, it's very, the likelihood of you having an East Asian EDAR mutation is very, very low, so he doesn't have uh, East Asian facial traits, and he seems to have some sociopathic tendencies based on his genotype in OXTR. 
Now let's move on to Ahmad. This individual is one of the darker individuals in this list. Uh, he has heterozygous for BH1 and he doesn't have any of the other variants. Uh, no BH2, no BH3, no BH4. Uh, definitely very dark eyes. Uh, he's predicted to have dark brown eyes, black hair, snub shaped nose and straight hair. So you can see in this picture I sort of I sort of found a guy, the uh, AI generated guy, I think this looks like it's generated by AI. I found this AI generated guy that sort of matches this description and I was like, okay, this looks like this looks like the right guy. I'm gonna use this for the video. Uh, but he could have had slightly different facial traits, obviously. I think this I think this boy in this image looks a little bit too South Asian. Um, when it comes to coloring variants, he's got some light variants in SLC 24A4, which seems to be very typical for these kinds of people because this is not the first sample and this is not the last sample in this list that is getting these uh, light variants in SLC 24A4. Uh, does not have the European no color mutation in ZRD2. His uh, genotype in ZRD2 once again is very super typical, actually even more typical than the previous individual. Um, you know, I can't really say, it, not very extraordinarily, not a no go learner. Uh, not schizophrenic, probably not a ADHD person either. Probably just a typical normal guy uh, based on his genotype in DRT2. You can look at the DRT2 gen genotype in purple. It's going to be in purple for every one of these, uh, every one of these people. Uh, now, when it comes to Combs, he's a warrior uh, in Combs Valmet variation. However, he has reduced MAOA activity in MAOA gene, which is kind of canceling out that warrior effect in Combs because uh, Combs enzyme. Uh, breaks down dopamine and MAOA ex enzyme also breaks down dopamine. They do the same thing. So he's a warrior in Compt, but he's a warrior in MAOA. It's kind of a little nuance. So I think overall he had probably intermediate levels of dopamine like everybody else. He does not have the European or the Arab lactose persistence mutation. Um, none of these samples do. I'm just going to spoil that for you. I'm actually not even going to talk about, I'm not going to mention this in the, in the samples that follow up. Uh, does not have East Asian EDAR, none of the other samples do either. Uh, you can just read it on the screen, I'm not going to talk about this once again. Uh, he is heterozygous for OXTR sociopathic variation, so it's possible that he might have had some sociopathic traits, but there's this other variation where he's definitely not a sociopath, no derived OXTR. Uh, judge for yourself, I don't think he was a sociopath based on this uh, on this kind of genotype, because I have similar genotype, actually. Now let's move on to Yasmin. Yasmin is the only woman among those samples, and she's also very dark in color. Uh, she's predicted to have dark brown eyes, Greek shaped nose, and black hair. Um, she's predicted to have wavy hair, also followed by curly hair, followed by straight hair, and probably not kinky hair. She does not have blue eye haplotype 1, which is very surprising, because blue eye haplotype 1 um, like, even East Asians, even American Indians, even they often have blue hypotype 1, and she doesn't even have that. So she's definitely very dark in coloring. Uh, she has dark non-European skin and traits based on her genotype in SLC 45A2. Uh, and she does actually have some light color variants in SLC 24A4, which is a common theme you will see with all of these samples. A lot of them have light color variants somewhere in SLC 24A4. Uh, when it comes to DRD2, she's got actually AG for Prophenetin Pro variation, which means one European no-go learner variant that sort of decreases the amount of D2 dopamine receptors. Uh, everything else it looks very typical. So this could be this could be the typical genotype uh, in DRD2 for like a European, not for me because my genotype is different, but for uh, for example, some some random British person could have the same exact genotype in DRD2 as her. Pretty interesting stuff. Uh, now let's move on to Compt. This is in blue, the blue area. Uh, she is a warrior, 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 excuse me, which means quicker dopamine reuptake, um, more comp enzyme activity, and she's also GG in the MAOA uh, gene. Also a warrior there, so definitely quicker dopamine reuptake, both MAOA and comp acti activity is high, uh, less dopamine in the system. I don't know what the implications of this is. Maybe she would have uh, problems with attention and motivation and better stress resiliency. This is what I'm inclining, inclined to believe uh, based on her genotypes here. And when it comes to sociopath genes in OXTR, she does not have any of the sociopath variations. In fact, she's quite the opposite of a sociopath uh, based on her genotype here. Definitely very empathetic. Now let's move on to Mohammed. Mohammed is predicted to have brown color eyes. Notice how it's brown instead of dark brown. That's kind of the range for these um, Shahar is Sohta genomes, they either get predicted with brown eyes or dark brown eyes. So brown is actually pretty light for them. Uh, getting predicted with brown eyes means you have light eyes for their standards. Uh, he's also predicted to have 
snub shaped nose and black hair. They all have black hair. All five samples, he's the fourth. All five of them have black hair. Uh, he likely has BH1. Blue haplotype 4 is undetermined. No blue eye haplotype 2. Blue haplotype 2 is the main blue eye variation that has to do with blue eyes and Europeans. For example, if you're a European, even if you don't have blue eyes, even if you have like hazel eyes or something that's not brown, you probably have blue eye haplotype 2. Uh, I have it. Uh, all, everybody I'm related to has it. It's pretty much, you know, all of us Europeans have it. But th these individuals are not Europeans, so they don't have it. None of them have BH2, actually. Uh, now, he's got some light color variants in the SLC24A4, ASIP, OCA2. Um, interestingly, he's got the, the only variant in SLC24A4 that he was genotyped for. He's got dark, um, dark genotype here. Quite interesting, because he's still predicted with brown eyes rather than dark brown. And um, now let's move on to DRD2. In DRD2, he's got, in profit variation, he's got AG, which means he does have one European no-go learner variant. Everything else looks really typical. Uh, all of these samples look really typical for DRD2. None of them really stand out. Uh, once again, this guy's DRD2 uh, genotype could be found somewhere in the British Isles. Some random English guy could have the same exact genotype as him. Not me, because my genotype is different, but for him, uh, looks very typical for Europeans. Uh, when it comes to Comt, he's got... Actually, he's got... Um, he wasn't genotyped for the main variations that I look for, which is a bummer, but I found these other variations that also have to do with dopamine reuptake, and he's got AA in comb, which means lower pain sensitivity, and he's got GG in this variation of MAOA, which means less likely to be addicted. Interesting genotypes for sure. Uh, when it comes to OXTR, does not have the sociopath gene, probably not a sociopath. Uh, he's got one variation where he's got TT, which is kind of like so sort of sociopath, but uh, it's not a very well-studied variation, and uh, I'm not... I'm not really, I'm not buying it. I don't think it's, a, I don't think he's a sociopath based on his genotype here. Now we're moving on to the final guy, which is Hassan. He's predicted to have brown color eyes, Greek shaped nose, and black hair. He most likely has BH1, blue eye haplotype 1, no blue eye haplotype 2, no BH4, no BH3. Uh, he's actually got some very exotic genotypes in Tyr, uh, which are kind of Mediterranean blue eye and blonde hair variants. I wasn't expecting to see that here because I was under the impression that these variants came from Anatolian Neolithic farmers. Uh, very interesting that he's got these genotypes here. Um, he has a lot of uh, genotypes that have to do with light color variants. Actually, on the screen, I wrote all of the variants he has for light eye color and hair color and skin color, everything. Color in general. Uh, now, in terms of DRD2, he's got... It's a very unique sample because he's got AA in pro pro variation, which means two European no-go learning variants. Uh, it's a very stereotypically European genotype to have. Um, I would say you would for every, for every non-European with this genotype, you will find... 40 Europeans with this genotype. It's a very stereotypically European genotype to have. Everything else looks really typical, but this one, Profinance Impro variation, where he's got AA, um, very interesting stuff. It does decrease the amount of D2 dopamine receptors, uh, so it, it could lead to traits like ADHD and other stuff, but it also leads to good things such as being a no-go learner. When it comes to Comte, uh, Comte's Valmet variation, he is... Um, Val Val, I think, warrior is Val Val, yes, he's warrior, which means quicker reuptake of dopamine, higher Compt enzyme activity, less dopamine in the system, and he's also got TT genotype in MAOA, um, I misspelled that here, oh my god, I shouldn't say that, yeah, I shouldn't say that, but um, he's, um, he, I, I misspelled that, it's supposed to be MAOA. So yeah, I made a, I made a typo here. Uh, but he's got reduced MAOA activity, slower reuptake of dopamine, and he is actually a warrior, which conflicts with the warrior genotype in Compt. So he's kind of got intermediate levels of dopamine based on that. Uh, I can say intermediate levels of dopamine for him. And for, when it comes to OXTR, uh, it seems that he is more sociopathic than not because he's heterozygous for this variation of OXTR sociopathy. Uh, so. And this is a pretty important variation. And then there's another variation where he's got lower empathy, uh, but this is a less studied uh, variation. But still, just judging from these results, I can assume that he's probably got socio sociopathic genotype in OXTR and the main variation of OXTR that he was a genotype for as well, based on the genotypes here. I can sort of Im make that imputation, if you will, because you can actually sort of impute genotype uh, by looking at nearby, nearby genotypes. Just from watching that part, you may not be able to grasp just how different the inhabitants of the city in the first period were from those that followed. All five individuals shown earlier clustered together, but I will choose Yasmin to be the representative of BA1 group, or the representative of inhabitants of Shagr Isahta 
in its first period. Later, we will compare Yasmin's GED match results to I-11459, which I choose to be the representative of Shahr i Sahta inhabitants in the second period. Now, when we examine this GED match differences between Yasmin's kid uh, versus this other kid from Shahr i Sahta from the second period, the second time period, we can see instantly a big difference. Uh, in terms of even, not even like small differences, but big differences in, ter in terms of um, continental stuff like West Asia versus South, South Asia in India. Uh, Yasmin is clearly very West Asian. She has some South Asian admixture. There is a little bit of, you can see with Eurogene's K13, there is 20% South Asian admixture, but she's mostly West Asian. She's mostly a... Um, West Eurasian individual. Now, Shahari Sahta BA2, this one, this individual who's actually a male, I didn't uh, go through the trouble of uh, giving him a name, but he is very South Asian in terms of ancestry. Uh, and even though she, he's even scoring some Oceanian. So clearly, completely different racially from Yasmin. Could this big difference be explained by some kind of Indus Valley expansion into this territory? I don't know. But the difference is very apparent to us. The first period of inhabitants of the city are very West Asian here with Harappa World. Yasmin is mostly scoring Baloch and Caucasian, both very West Asian categories to score. Whereas this sample from Shahar i Sahta, second period, same city but a different time period. Uh, you go five centuries further and suddenly he's 45% South Indian. Where does, the, where does the South Indian come from? Here's a comparison of the same sort with Pondian ALK10. Uh, now, of course, it would be much better if this calculator had references for BMAC and for uh, Iranian Neolithic farmers, but this is the best we can do. Uh, so it seems like CHG is eating up a lot of the Iranian Neolithic farmer and BMAC drift that these individuals have. Uh, Shahr i Sahta BA1 is closest and Yasmin is closest to various uh, BMAC Bactrian Margiana archaeological complex in Central Asia. Uh, but she is scoring mostly CHG here. Whereas the Shahr i Sahta BA2, second period Shahr i Sahta, is actually mostly scoring South Indian. The biggest component that he scores is ASI, Ancestral South Indian. It's pretty crazy that in a couple of centuries, the inhabitants of the city go from, uh, as you can see here, 19% South Asian in case of Yasmin, to 47, 48% South Asian in the case of this uh, BA2 second period individual who's uh, a male. Um, and uh, here's a Paleolithic model. This may be harder to understand, but as you can see, Yasmin is mostly scoring ancestral North Eurasian plus Natufian, and it seems that Caucasus hunter-gatherers and various Iranian Neolithic farmers score a mixture of ancestral North Eurasian and Natufian with this calculator. She is only scoring 7% ancestral South Eurasian. Now compare that with I-11459 from second period Shahri Sahta, same city but a couple centuries later, and he's suddenly scoring 28% ancestral South Eurasian. A very big change in the percentage of um, Indian-related and South Asian-related admixture. What do you think happened? I think the explanation may lie in mixing between native Shahr i Sahta inhabitants of period 1 and pre Harappan traders. Shahr i Sahta was a major city and a part of the Helmand culture. As any major city, it had trade contacts with Harappan cities. Thank you for watching until the end. The links to download the raw genomes for all of the samples featured in this video will be in the description. Also on my Google Drive, you will find all Shahr i Sahta DNA samples from both first and second period. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.